Hey, everybody. Hi, it's Karen McCullough, and I have a real treat for you today. You know, a lot of people have been coming up to me and talking about chat GPT and everywhere I look on LinkedIn. This morning, I had the TV on listening to CNBC and Eric Schmidt, the ex-CEO of Google, was on for about an hour talking about how it's just taken over, you know, how they got 13 million people, people to use chat like in one day and how it's just exploding. So I thought, you know, I'm still stuck on how to use it. Sometimes I, uh, I, I don't even know what I'm doing when I'm on there. So I thought I would bring in a guest today. And the guest is, it's actually Ben McCullough, same last name. Um, ben is actually my marketing director. He's the one that created that website that so many of you talk about and tell me how much you like. That's Ben. And I thought I would ask him to talk about chat and maybe explain some of the ways that he uses it and how maybe you can get your best use out of it. So hi, Ben. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me on. This is uh, yeah, fun. I'm excited. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah so tell yeah, me a little so bit. Chat GPT. It's, um, you know, I think <laughs> I have, uh, it's a funny story. I think you were the one that actually told me about it. I'd been playing around with AI writers for a while. Um, I mean, they've been around for a while. Um, you know, I think I, there's um, Jasper is one of them, and then Write Sonic. There's a bunch of them out there that 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 leverage um, AI in, in in the open AI model um, to help writers write and that kind of thing. And I've been playing with them, and they're pretty good. So when you told me about chat GPT, I was kind of like, okay, I've been playing with this stuff that I don't know what that is. But uh, anyway, I started playing with it. And um, yeah, honestly, it kind of blew my mind. Um, it's it's pretty neat. And for uh, chat GPT four, which came out just a, a week or so ago, maybe two weeks ago, is actually way better. Um, than the stuff with uh, version three and 3.5. That's what Eric Eric Schmidt was talking about chat for. And he said it blew him away. They used it over the weekend. And it was amazing how they're even being able to do voice uh, reproductions with it. And um, there's just some amazing things coming on. So if, if we were just starting with chat, give us some ideas of how we can use it. Yeah. So before I jump in, I mean, there's there's a couple of things to keep in mind. So if you're familiar with chat GPT or you've heard about it, one of the things you might have heard where you might say, well, that sounds cool, but I'm not sure how useful it can be is due to the data limitations that it has. Right. So, um, you know, you're going to hear about it where it says, you know, the data that it's been trained with stops somewhere in, you know, 2021, I believe. You know, so it's it's a it's a few years old the data, but especially with Chat GPT four, you can load data in. So so whatever conversation you're having, if you're good at feeding it information, so say there's an article that you want it to reference, you can copy and paste and feed that in and and type in things like, hey, for the purposes of this conversation, you know, I would like for you to know about this and you could paste it in or there's a recent article and then going forward it will actually know about that and it will make use of it so there are ways that you can feed data in so um, you're there's telling really... me that go ahead so you're telling me that i can put something in and it's going to remember it and come back and use it again it can it can reference it right okay. um, you could ask it to paraphrase something for you so for example if you wanted um you had a really long article and you wanted to use that as a reference, um, but it was really long and you just wanted to get the, the key points really quickly, you could feed that in and, and ask it to give me a summary of this article and create you know, bullets of all the key uh, concepts, right? And you can even ask it to do something like, give me headers for the bullets with a quick one or two word summary of what each of those key points are, and it'll spit it out in that format. You can wow. ask it to put it in a table for you and it will format it in a table. Um, there's there's a lot of cool stuff. It just really comes down to just like anything. Uh, it's, it's how you ask, right? So I think there's a, a commercial on right now uh, where it's like Charles Barkley and Spike Lee and these guys are sitting around, they found a genie and they're asking it for stuff. And like they ask for box seats and they literally get a box that they have to sit on, or I want wings, like they're talking about chicken wings, and he gets wings on his back, right? So it's kind of that old, that old 
meme about genies and careful kind of what you wish for, that's sort of what chat GPT is like, right? It's, it's only going to give you as good as your question. Oh, so okay. you really have to become good at asking a question in the most detailed and specific way. Um, and, and because it's a chat, you can refine that through the conversation. So you can continue to kind of refine and define your question as you go. If it doesn't kind of give you the, the initial thing, say, yeah, that's neat, but can we go deeper with that? Or I like what you talked about here with this point. Can you expand on that? Give me a paragraph or two about what you mean there. And it will do it. Amazing. This sounds amazing. Yeah. So um, I could pull it up. I mean, I think what you wanted to talk about were maybe some of the the ways that you might use it in a, in a normal sort of day-to-day -day situation. Yeah, I like that. But I also like now what you're saying about actually how we ask the question. I think sometimes, I mean, I just ask it a silly question, silly, you know, simple question. I never really thought about putting more into it, like getting what I wanted from that answer. So what I'm hearing you say, which is good for me to hear, is the way we phrase our questions and the way we put them in is really the quality of what we're going to get out. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Um, you got to be careful. There's a couple things that um, that I would caution people. So so I think we're getting excited about this and we're like, wow, I can, I can use it. And once you start playing with it, you're really going to get kind of excited if you haven't played with it yet, because you're going to be surprised at how good the responses are. But there's a couple caveats and a couple things that you need to be careful of. One... Okay. You, you can't trust everything that it says. It will make mistakes, but it does so with the utmost confidence. So it's not going to warn you that some of its um, feedback or some of the, the results are fabricated. And sometimes it'll just make stuff up and it will make it up without, <laughs> without any kind of warning. I think when I, uh, when I was it asking if, it, if I, I asked if it knew about you and it said it did. And it kind of gave me a summary of your of your career. And I asked it to give you to give me a, a breakdown of your career highlights. Um, so a timeline. And it started making up books you wrote. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, you didn't write. But, and then I Googled it author. to see if there, there was an a book. author named Karen McCullough. There is, but I Googled it to see if there was actually a book that it brought. <laughs> no, it just made what it up out it? of thin air. There was no actual book um ms msu made stuff up <laughs> yeah it, it, so you really have to be careful about okay. um so people that will just say hey i'm a writer and this is going to save me a lot of time i'm just going to take exactly what it spits out um there's a couple reasons why you don't want to do that one is it could make stuff up two it could just be factually inaccurate because of the data that it's using number two is if you're using this to write articles for you Google is becoming much smarter about like content that's created artificially. There's patterns and there's little signatures that AI, and, you know, depending on which model you're using, um, and it really comes down, down to just, you might not catch it as a human being reading it, but they call it the burstiness, which is, which is how um, sort of chaotic and random humans write. Uh, sometimes we a really long sentence or a run on followed by a very short sentence, or we might write, there's a lot of randomness in how we write where AI tends to write very symmetrical, very uniform. All of its sentences tend to be about the same length and it's easy to read. And a lot of times we don't even catch that when we're reading it, but Google mm -hmm. now can catch that and it can detect what it thinks, um, I, the I likelihood just heard... of a human writing this versus AI. Yeah. I yeah. just heard that universities have already come up with an application so that they can spot when kids are writing totally AI, you know, mm -hmm. composition. So and they've actually I'm, caught I'm kids sure, now. Yeah, they've actually caught kids using AI. Right. And um, you know, as far as they're concerned, that's that's plagiarism when you're. So you got to be careful. So, um, so what else? What what? Where else did well, you want to? I don't know. I mean, I'm going to catch you off guard, but I'd like for you to write, to kind of share with us a prompt that you write. Um, just yeah. one or two, just to get us started. I mean, this is just a beginner today, but you've kind of got my interest and maybe it's some of the listeners. Yeah. So I'll share, um, and, and I won't take credit for this. I found this, um, 
you know, through, through my research, but there's a prompt that's sort of floating around out in the internet. Okay. That is sort of the prompt to end all prompts. It's kind of the, and a prompt is something, I think we're using that word. It's just a question. It's, it's what people would call. So when you hear the word prompt in reference to chat GPT, um, we're just talking about what we are inputting, the question that we're asking. And so the prompt that I have liked to use lately is one that in and of itself, it's, it's, it's a prompt telling chat GPT, you want it to write the prompt for you. <laughs> Wait, so, it's a prompt to get the prompt? It's a prompt to create the perfect prompt for what you're trying to do. So let's, why don't we play with it? Um, okay. Let's pretend that I have a podcast okay. and I'm going to interview you next week. And I'm trying to prepare for that podcast. And I want to come up with a series of questions um, that are perfect for the podcast. And I'm, and I'm thinking about it, but I'm, but I'm kind of stuck. So I want chat GPT to help me kind of get creative and come up with some more questions. Okay, sounds good. Okay, okay. so here's ChatGPT and I, I pay for this. There's a, you can upgrade if you, it's free to use. Um, and so you go to chat.openai.com, um, but I've upgraded to a paid plan. That way I can get access to ChatGPT4, which is the latest, most advanced model um, but you can only get that right now. Um, if you're paying, and you'll notice they sort of throttle how much you can use. So they cap it off at 25 messages every three hours. I haven't actually gotten any warnings that I've been using it too much. Um, so I don't know how strict they are with that. But let's paste in the prompt that I use. And we'll, we'll put this um, in the comments so you can use it. So I write here, I want you to become my prompt creator. Your goal is to help me craft the best possible prompt for my needs. The prompt will be used by you, ChatGPT. You will follow the following process. One, your first response will be to ask me what the prompt should be about. I will provide my answer, but we need to improve it through a continual iterational, through, through continual iterations by going through the next steps. Two, based on my input, you will generate three scenarios. First, revise, you're gonna provide a revised prompt. Um, it should be clear and concise and easily understood by you. Number two, you're gonna provide suggestions that will detail um, what, what maybe I wanna include in my prompt to improve it. And three, it's gonna ask, and this is most important, it's gonna ask a series of relevant questions pertaining to what additional information is needed for chat GPT to improve the prompt. And then we just continue through that until I feel like I got what I need. Okay. So I don't even have to, all I have to do is paste the prompt here and click enter. I don't have to do anything else. Then it's going to ask me, okay, Which what should the prompt be about, right? Um, let me know. So I'm going to say, let's just start there. You don't have to get okay. that descriptive here because it's going to ask questions so so just give the basics of what you want so i click okay. enter so then it's going to revise the prompt wow so these are the suggestions so this isn't even really the questions it's asking me yet okay so questions this is this is great i could use this when i get asked <laughs> to send questions in for a podcast Sure. I mean, you could use it for as a keynote speaker. Let's right. say you've got you have to customize your your topic for a particular client. And there might be an right. area that you really want to I mean, you know about it, but you want to get like a deeper series of questions or you want to go deeper with the topic. OK, so now you'll notice it's done and it's the question. So question one, two, three. Um, I'm not even looking at the suggestions right, right. now. I'm We're just going to go right us. to the questions. What specific aspects of generations in the workplace do you want to explore during the interview? Let's say, so number one, um, the conflict between Gen Z and boomers when it comes to Yeah, just making something up. That's uh, pretty good. 
Number two, are there any particular challenges or topics you want to focus on, such as remote work or the role in technology? Um, we definitely will not talk about remote work. Um, would you like to include any personal anecdotes or experience to make more engaging? I'm going to say no here. Because we want okay. it for time. Yeah. Well, no, because it will make stuff up. Right? Oh, okay. So this oh, is stuff right. that it doesn't know that are factual. So right. it's like, would you like to include any personal anecdotes or experiences? I can, I can do that. I can do right? that. Okay. Right. Um, but if I do say yes here, this is where you're getting into that gray territory. That's where they MSU. Zone, where it will say, it'll start making up stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're going to say no. And let me click enter. Okay. Revise prompt. This is really great. Kind of makes I'm me scared. I'm just going to do one more iteration to show you. And then it just, we'll spit. Yeah. It's, takes, it's taking all the work out of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's still work to be done. This is not a magic I know, but it's scaring a, me. But it does yeah. help to. Uh, so notice the questions are fewer now because we're, we're kind of getting. And then you'll notice when you start to get to the end, because it will do this indefinitely or, or infinitely, right? But when it starts to re-ask the same questions, you know, okay, we're, we're probably getting to a point where we're done. Okay. So are there any specific case studies or companies that you'd like to discuss to illustrate complex? I'm going to say no again here, because again, it can I could do up, that. Well, right. it can make up case studies. And also right. it, it's not going to be current because I would want to do case studies that are happening right now. And this is going to go back a year or two, correct? If it does that, but I but I would be careful when you're asking because when it says anything like case studies, right, testimonials, that's when you're getting into to pretend world. That's where it, okay. it's going to start making those up. Okay. Um, if you're going to ask it for things like I want stats or you want it to give its references, okay. Because otherwise, say please provide references and then say I only want factual, proven stats, not you know from from um, you know reputable sources please don't make like let it know you don't want it to just make stuff up um okay. would you like to address any potential benefits of having um so i'm going to say no and then yes and these are all the prompts that you prompted it to prompt you on yeah so okay so we're going to be done we can okay. keep going but i'm going right. to spit it back out and we'll see what's going on and then i'll show you what you can continue to do with it i am just this is amazing Kind of gets you excited. Yeah, so. And I, I think for me, because I would always be like, oh my gosh, am I using you too much chat? It doesn't care. You can go on and on and on and on. It's not a person. I think we have. We <laughs> it's, have to, not, it's not a person. Okay, it's not so a person. I am going to copy this. And I'm just going to say we're done. So now I'm going to paste in what I just copied. So instead of revised prompt, I'm going to delete that and then i'm gonna say okay so um i'm gonna add here so create a list of engaging questions so then so now it's giving me the questions right and you've revised it so it's what you need now it's you've taken out everything you don't need yeah so this yeah so let's see how many it's going to give us now, while this is going, so some of the stuff that you can do, since this is a conversation and this is all kind of saved in its memory, um, once this is done, you can continue to ask it more. Like, let's say you don't like some of the questions, the questions, but you like others better. You could tell it to expand or go deeper on a particular question. Okay. You can ask it to revise the list going in a deep in a direction maybe maybe in your original prompt we talked about we wanted to explore remote work but we decide actually i like where this is going towards engagement better so you could tell it to forget about that and to focus more on so you can continue to go down this road but look i mean it is basically just generated it's a lot of questions, questions. That i would have come up with podcast cool. now yeah i don't know i haven't read through all these they're right. probably not all gold but Look, it gave me, I asked for 15, it gave me 15. But you are showing us how you can get things that we really want out of this yes. by writing the right prompt and having chat actually help you create the right prompt. Yes. Um, and then again, you need to read through them 
and make right. sure that they all are valid and they make sense. Don't just, I mean, I can't stress that enough. Don't just take it at its word because you're impressed by how quickly it spit all this out. That would have taken you hours to come up with, you know, let's also go through and make sure that it's, that it's valid and that it meets, <laughs> meets your needs. So. This so is great. great, Ben. Yeah. I Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I hope this helped. Um, will you come back again? Cause you are the marketing guru. <laughs> Maybe we can do this or we can, maybe we can talk about SEO next time. Yeah, I'd love to do that. I'd love to share thoughts there. And, uh, you know, there's some, some overlap between using chat GPT and to help you with, with SEO as well. So it can help with blog titles or um, conclusions to a blog. If you, it can even rewrite. So let's say you have a blog that you've written and you don't want it to okay. rewrite everything. You just want it to proofread it for certain things. You could post that blog in and ask it to to proofread just for you know ease of reading and grammatical errors and it will spit out the content i'm gonna you know i need that <laughs> all right well we're gonna we're gonna close this down guys i hope you enjoyed this you can send me an email since this is going to be in my newsletter or we can put comments below is that right will we have a place for comments are we going to sure. put this up on youtube great okay everybody well i hope that you enjoyed it as much as i did and i'm going to start working on my prompts <laughs> Bye, Ben. Bye, everybody. Bye. And I'll include that prompt in the comments so that you have that. Sounds right. good. <laughs>